Hello and welcome to Prosperity by the Pint. This is the podcast where we talk about money, investing, business, and life success, all while having a cold beer. I'm your host, Bryce Carter, certified financial planner, chartered financial consultant, certified investment management analyst, and self-proclaimed millennial money expert. Welcome to episode 52, understanding indexes, points, and basis points. The cold beer of the week is from Maui Brewing Company. It's Island Brewed. It is their Bikini Blonde, a clean, crisp, and refreshing hell is perfect any time. 5.2% alcohol. Let's give it a try, team. That is light and refreshing and would go really well on like a 90 degree day. So my industry is full of jargon. Uh, there was a study done, I think, by AARP that says financial advisors talk in more jargon than an auto mechanic, which is impressive because those guys will make your head spin when they're talking about them line specs on the rotary girder or whatever, right? But it's full of jar jargon, bulls, bears, uh, dog with fleas, points, basis points, bips, you name it, it's full of jargon. I mean, there's even a, a term for uh, almost every animal on a farm. Do you know there's an ostrich? An ostrich is a Wall Street term. That's somebody that buries their head in the sand and doesn't uh, listen to the market news. A pig is somebody that gets greedy. Uh, a bull is a, somebody that thinks the market's going to go up. A bear is somebody that thinks the market's going to go down. And a sheep has no focus or strategy. I mean, there's so many different jargon terms in my world. I just want to explain a couple of the the few, um, few around this, those ones that I just referenced, the animals. But I also wanted to talk mostly about indexes. Um, and points and basis points. Okay, so first, I want to cover one that I, I think is this the uh, relatively simple, which is a basis point. So financial advisors and investment people will talk about basis points all the time, or BIPs. They're sometimes referred to because basis point. If you sh if you abbreviate it, it kind of spells BPS BIPs. So what is a basis point? A basis point is nothing more than a hundredth of a percent. So 100 basis points is 1%. 200 basis points is 2%. 50 basis points is a half a percent. Makes sense? So a basis point is nothing more than a hundredth of a percent. So that's that's it. That's all a basis point is. Now you can talk the jargon, right? Now, this is very, very different than the points on an index. So for example, if you hear on the news today that the Dow Jones was up 500 points, it is not up 500 basis points. It's not up 5%, right? It's up 500 Dow Jones points. If you hear that the NASDAQ was up 30 points today or down 30 points, it's not up or down 30 in uh, basis points. It's up the indexes points, okay? And these index points I'm going to get to in a minute. But first, I want to just kind of take a step back and give you a little history on stock market indexes. Before I do that, I'm going to drink this lovely Hawaiian beer. Bikini Blonde. We're having a rare sunny day here in Michigan. March, it's uh, like 45 and sunny. And so that's why I picked this beer up today. Um, so the first stock index ever created, a little history lesson here, first stock index ever created was July 3rd, 1884, and it was the Dow Jones Transporta uh, Transportation Index. It was 11 transportation-related companies. Nine of them were railroads. I know that's probably shocking in the 1880s, right? That made up actually the vast majority of the market value was railroads in the, in the 1800s. But it was created by a guy named Charles uh, Dow and his partner, Edward Jones, um, different Edward Jones and the Edward Jones brokerage. But uh, Dow was a newspaper man. And so uh, the, the company that they created, they had this, this weekly newsletter that went out and basically applied a value to their Dow Jones Transportation Index. And uh, fun fact, this paper later became the Wall Street Journal. So um, Charles Dow and Edward Jones partnered together, created this index. It was part of a, a newspaper uh newsletter thing that they were sending out on a weekly basis, daily basis. Uh, and so there was a fun, also fun fact of the 11 stocks that were in the original transportation index, only one remains. Uh, and that is the Union Pacific Corporation. So I don't want you to confuse this Dow Jones transportation index with the Dow Jones that we're also familiar with today. And that is the Dow Jones industrial average, which is comprised of 30 companies. And that was created in 1895. So a couple of years later, five years later, four years later. <clears throat> and so the, the Dow Jones that we all think of today is the Dow Jones industrial average. It's not all industry 
industrial companies and it's not transportation companies it's 30 companies and the dow jones and s&p companies decide what companies are included in the dow jones again it's a small shap- a snapshot of of u.s large cap companies there's only 30 of them and there's 500 to a thousand u.s large companies depending on your definition of large and and so what they build this index to be kind of representative of the u.s economy but 30 companies is still a pretty small snapshot so now that you understand indexes a little bit better, let's talk about points on an index. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the, the one you're going to hear about on the news when, when you're driving home from work on, on CNBC or whatever, is uh, what's known as a price-weighted index. So it's not the most efficient. So what a price-weighted index is, is each company has a listed stock price. So like uh, Berkshire Hathaway, for instance, has a share price of a couple hundred thousand. Um, Google has a, a share price somewhere around 13, 1400. And so each one, each company has a share price, right? And Berkshire Hathaway is not necessarily worth more than Google, even though the price is a lot higher. It has to do with the number of shares that they have issued, right? So if you have only 10 shares of Berkshire Hathaway and it sells at 250,000, it's worth 2.5 million, right? Well, if it's you know a company that has uh, a million shares at two hundred and fifty thousand, they're worth significantly more, right? So that's when I say it's a price weighted index. What the Dow Jones does is it gives more points to the company based on the stock price. Okay, so it's a price weighted index. It is by and large considered to be an inefficient way of tracking markets, but because there's so much history there with the Dow Jones and the companies that are on it are just, you know, titans of industry, uh, it's something that we still follow to this day. A better index to watch would be the S&P 500. And the reason being, it's, you know, it's still not perfect, but it's called a market cap weighted index. So the more valuable the company, not the stock price, the more valuable the company, the more credit or more points they get in the index. So when these all these different indexes have a formula that gives the, the index a point, a point value, right? So the S&P 500 says essentially that the top five companies are worth 20%, the next 100 companies are worth X percent and so on and so forth. And so when you're hearing these point changes, it's based on this formula that these index creators have. It's not, uh, it's not necessarily the change in each individual stock price, right? It's the change of the this metric that's kind of like a black cloud that we look at with the the Dow and the S and P is a little bit more transparent. But where I wanted to go with this is the difference between points on a, on an index and basis points. So if the Dow Jones is down five percent. That would mean it's down 1,200, roughly 1,200 Dow Jones points. Contrarily, if it's down 5%, I guess not contrarily, but along the same line of thought there, is if it's down 5%, it's down 500 basis points. All right, so let me say this again so that makes sense. The Dow is down 1,200 points. That means it's down about 5%. 5% is 500 basis points. All basis points are, a, 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 you know, a hundredth of a percent, right? So the points and basis points have nothing to do with each other. I'm just trying to explain that difference. What I think is important is that you understand that points on the Dow don't mean nearly as much as they used to. So let's, let's look at it this way. The Dow Jones on... February 27th had the single, no, this was, uh, yeah, this was February 27th had the single largest point sell off in market history, the single largest point sell off in history, which means the Dow Jones out at, you know, CNBC, everybody's screaming the largest point drop in Dow history. Okay. I mean, the Dow has been there since through the great depression, world war two, uh, it, you know, Vietnam war, um, the ninth crash in 1987, the great depression, the tech bubble, it's been there through all that. And they're screaming the largest point sell off in history. It was only down 4.42%, which is the eighth largest percentage change because the Dow keeps going up in value because the value of this, the, the companies underneath keep going up in value over long periods of time. So the Dow right now is somewhere around 27, 28,000, depending on when, when we publish this post and what the Dow is at right now. 
in 2008, the crash, you know, was hovering around 10,000 points. And so a thousand point drop was 10% off. A thousand point drop today is less than less than 4%. And so you got to understand points don't matter nearly as much as they used to. What's crazy is on March 2nd, the Dow had the largest point gain in history so far, 1,295, 1,294 points. So on February 27th, the largest point decline in history, March 2nd, the largest point increase in history, all within two trading business trading days. I mean, that is just, just, just crazy. But points, again, don't matter nearly as much. So the uh, 1,294 point gain was only up 5.1%. That's the seventh most in history. Now, when I say the S&P is a slightly better index, that's because it encapsulates 500 companies as opposed to the 30 that are in the Dow. But there's already over 3,800 U.S. stocks. And by some estimates in the entire world, there's hundreds of thousands of stocks you can buy. Now, internationally, there's some small companies that are, you know, very thinly traded, so you wouldn't want to necessarily buy those. But the U.S. accounts for about 50% of the world's stock market value. And that, the you know, in 3,800 companies, and the S&P 500 is still only 500 of them. There's a lot of other companies out there that are not represented in the S&P 500. So when you hear that the market is up or the market is down, it's actually only small snapshots of it that, that you're seeing as far as a, a, a company. Now, those are the biggest companies in the S&P 500. So therefore, they should be indicative of the overall economy, but they're not indicative of every market because here's the thing. At different stages of a market cycle and an economic cycle, large companies will do better or small companies or value companies or growth companies, et cetera, changes, right? So you need a representation of a, of a more broad market index. One would be like the Wilshire 5000, but we're not anytime soon going to hear as CNBC and Fox Business and the other news channels talking about the Wilshire 5000. So what you need to understand too is that indexing and benchmarking go hand in hand. So if you're using the S&P 500 to compare your portfolio, and the S&P 500, again, is only 500 US large stocks, uh, and your portfolio consists of large stocks, medium stocks, small stocks, bonds maybe, and then internationals, it's not a good benchmark for your portfolio because your portfolio is much more diverse. And so in, in times where the S&P is a bad performing asset class and international and bonds do better, your portfolio is going to look like you're a genius if you're using that as the benchmark. Contrary, on the other side of that, to contrast it, is the S&P is knocking out of the park in the best performing asset class. It makes your portfolio look like shit, but it's not. It's just well diversified, right? So keep a longer term focus on that. So... Yeah, a good example would be from 2010 until today, uh, the S&P 500, U.S. large cap companies have absolutely decimated international stocks. I mean, it's not even close. But for the previous 10 years, from 2000 to 2010, international companies have decimated the S&P 500. So there could be multi-year, even decade-long periods or longer that international or U.S. outperform. So when you're looking at an index, you uh, a single index is usually not a good portfolio benchmark. So in summary, there's a lot of Wall Street jargon up there, out there. Bears mean a down market, bulls mean an up market. If you know just that, 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 that probably gets you far enough. A basis point is nothing but a hundredth of a percent. So if your portfolio is up 1%, it's up 100 basis points. Good for you. If you hear the Dow Jones was up 100 points yesterday, it doesn't mean a whole lot. Uh, it's not it's not a it's not up 100 basis points. It's up 100 points and through some black hole in which the Dow Jones is calculated, it does give an indication of the broader stock market. But remember, that's only 30 companies of 3,800. Now you should have a little better understanding of indexes, points, basis points, bulls, bears, ostriches, sheep's pig, and the Wall Street farm animals. But if you don't, send us a message. We'll be happy to answer your question. Don't forget to subscribe, Prosperity by the Pint, wherever you get your podcasts. That's where we are. Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Facebook, we're there. Cheers. The topics that I discuss in this podcast are meant to be general information and educational only. I'm not giving you specific advice because I don't know you personally. In order to give you specific advice, you should work with an advisor or someone that can learn your specific situation and give you advice that applies to you. If I talk about a specific security, please and keep in mind I'm not recommending that security. And don't forget, investing involves risk. When you invest, there's always the possibility of losing capital, which is why you should consult with a qualified, licensed financial advisor prior to investing.